Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Guidewell Insights Lounge. You can hear that we're here at the end of day two a Singularity Medicine, or Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. Lots of buzz in the room, we're in the middle of the Innovation Lab, and I'm very excited to bring a wonderful guest, Remco Vermeulen. Remco, welcome to the Insights Lounge. Thank you very much. Remco is the Head of Product and Service Design at Telefonica Innovation. Remco, I was hoping you could maybe start with giving us a brief description of what your company is. Okay, so I work at Telefonica Innovation, which is a telecom operator especially operating in Latin America and Europe, so we've got 320 million customers. Uh, so we're focusing as a normal telco, or uh, we focus on, on telco. But on the other hand, working in innovation, where we're looking at different ways of innovating in different areas. This could be from M2M to the Internet of Things, uh, the industrial Internet of Things, but as well in healthcare. So what we're looking at, how can we innovate in healthcare, what can we bring more to our customers, and what can we do with the data we have to actually innovate in healthcare. And it's wonderful too because I think part of the value of our audience is we have this global perspective. So with your perspective, Remco, what area of health and medicine needs to be disrupted next in order for real transformation to occur? So I think there's a lot of areas which you can improve and where we can innovate. Uh, from our point of view, we're not a medical, we're not a hospital, uh, we're not doctors. Uh, so where we think where, where we can play a role is definitely the last mile. So, for example, being here in San Diego, we see a lot of bright people, uh, the best hospitals around there. What we sometimes forget is that a lot of people actually don't have any access to healthcare whatsoever. Right. So for example, 50% of countries, there's less than one doctor per 1,000 people. If you bring that to mental health, actually more than 50% only has like one psychiatrist per 100,000 people. So in our opinion is the last mile to actually bring healthcare to people. And that last mile actually brings in a lot of barriers where people don't have the money, they don't have the knowledge, they might have a low health literacy. Mm -hmm. So we think that like packaging up health services, bringing the knowledge that you might have here in San Diego or you might have in the best hospitals, actually bring them to people wherever they might be, close to a hospital or really far away from a hospital. Well, it sounds like you're really a, tr a tremendous participant here at, at Exponential Medicine. You know, I was hoping that we could maybe hear your response to another theme that has had a lot of conversation, and that's around big data. How do you expect big data will, conti big data will continue to evolve both patient care and the patient experience? Okay, so if we talk to patients, um, and if we talk, we work a lot in big data analysis, uh, data scientists, predictive analysis. What we find quite often, uh, a lot of people talk about big data, but quite often we're talking more about small data. If we talk to patients, they couldn't care less about big data. What they want to know is about their data. They want right. to about my personal data. So what we're focusing on, not only on like, okay, we're going to do some big data, as some companies might say, we're actually looking at what can I do for you as a patient. So quite often this comes to very subtle things. For example, in mental health, it could be that you know, your behavior is changing, we can do predictive analysis to actually do a prediction like in two weeks something might go wrong. But what this practically comes down to is something very simple. It could be that a psychiatrist, for example, knows that I have to give a call to patient number X. So we think actually that big data analysis, that's what happens behind the scenes. What really makes a big difference is like very practical, actionable items that you could do as a doctor, but as well as a patient. Right, right. Well, Remco, another, another um, challenge I think that some folks might find in the healthcare industry is, you know, for example, we're here in the Innovation Lab, we're surrounded by bleeding edge technology. How can someone like yourself take the concepts that you're exposed to here, bring them back to your enterprise, and really make an impactful change? So what we think there's a lot of, as I mentioned, there's a lot of knowledge out there. So what we try to do is work with the best neurologists, psychiatrists, to actually get their insights. But what often happens is that that information actually gets locked into your consultation. So a patient might go to a consultation, they might have the best of care and there's no competition with that. But what happens is before actually getting into the consultation, there's a whole route and there's a lot of patients actually never get there. So what we think is would help is bring the knowledge that we have here, get the insights on the various stakeholders of the whole health system, from patients to doctors to payers, uh, as well to governments and see how that all can bring, bring together and actually we can give services to patients better. So I think it's the whole insights of all these people but work into a simple system that can work for patients directly. 
Well, you know, clearly you've, you, many of your responses have really focused on the patient and the individual and keeping them at the center of care. What is your vision of the empowered patient of tomorrow? So, working with lots of technology innovation, we quite often see that the patient is not involved. So, personally, uh, we have a team of user researchers, designers, which we put together with doctors, uh, specialists, as well as with data scientists and engineers. And what we do there is we do ethnography, we follow patients around, we do diary studies to actually understand how should the service be for these patients. So what we do is actually we prototype with patients, see like, would this be the service that you want? Which probably they have some feedback. We change and we iterate. So we use like lean startup methodology, bring that directly to patients. So we believe that, you know, if, if you don't have the patient in the center of there, right. it might be really interesting for the doctor, but the patient's not going to use it. Right. Which means that for the doctor then it's going to be interested either because he's not, if the patient doesn't use it, what's the point of it? Right, right, absolutely. Well, Remco, I really appreciate you sharing your time and your perspectives with us here at the Guidewell Insights Lounge. Up next we have David Metcalf, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.